wait for that to be strained. Hello, hello, welcome back to today's episode. It is the 31st of January 2022. And the question today is, how do you plan to make the world a better place? How do you plan to make the world a better place? So these are the two answers that I wrote today. I wrote with love heart format. There. I plan to make the world a better place by embodying and giving myself agape love extending it outwards and hopefully the flow on embodiment ensues the second thing i wrote was touching souls and hearts with honesty so let's expand on these answers so i think there's many different ways to make the world a better place but the best way to start is by focusing on you because when you focus on you then less then others have don't have to focus as much on you in terms of healing you or helping you in any sense because you're helping yourself right it's not to say that you can't help others or you can't have others help you definitely do but if you're helping yourself there's less work that others need to do for you right and so by focusing on yourself you in turn you know and that and when you improve others around you will improve I think it's like a circular effect it's like the rising tide effect when the tide rises all the boats rise so for me agape love um it's a term that i heard recently and i think it's really amazing i know people who do their best to really embody it and make it a lifestyle in the way they view things and it's a mindset for them so i'm trialing it for now i'll see how it goes i don't see many downsides i just know that it is can be emotionally draining but that is how you know some of the things that are amazing in life are like having children having a family or really sacrificing it all for whether it be your passion your interest your organization your work or just your work for life not your actual career but whatever you want to work on in life and yeah I think stemming all things from a place of love and curiosity and generosity instead of a place of let's say hatred disdain competition jealousy um that's the way I think is better to live life for now um and then the second point touching souls and hearts with honesty so there's a few words that i think we bounce around quite a lot or sometimes which are things like vulnerability and openness and i'd say i am open enough i'm vulnerable enough but i think the key underlying thing between all those things is just being honest being honest with yourself being honest with others communicating that and honesty can bleed into vulnerability uh, so touching souls and hearts with honesty. Mm. I think those are some really, you know, broad conceptual things, but how are they tangible? So making the world a better place. It's for me, you know, trying to figure out what kind of life I want to live and authentically striving towards it and doing my best to embody those qualities or um, those experiences and opportunities and the learnings and teachings from them. I think uh, that just means going out of your way to get to know many people, know their stories really well, maybe share their stories when it's relevant to others and perhaps they can glean something else from it as well. And when you accumulate experiences, I think a really great Michelle Obama quote is, um, I don't want to butcher it, so I'm going to search up right now, but it's something about doors. And I think I love broad metaphors. Joe Weeby is fantastic. Um, yes, let's find it. Okay. When you've worked hard and done well and walked through that doorway of opportunity, you do not slam it shut behind you. You reach back and you give other folk the same chances that helped you succeed. So I think that's pretty powerful. I think that's pretty true. I'd say that I'm very lucky and privileged and have, you know, been successful and hardworking, conscientious, but also lucky and privileged to to have the life that I have now or the life that I hope to have or things that I'm at right now. So the state in general. And when you have those experiences and opportunities, I think it's really important as a person uh, to experience things but then once you have experienced them you know fairly assess them and then assess the people around you and see if they would fit the opportunity if they could be um pushed to make the most out of certain things whatever it may be so I think that's a role that I play in life and that's how I intend to make the world a better place to experience many things and then 
through my own assessment and evaluation of the things and people around me to connect the things together and people together so that, you know, these learnings and teachings continue to flow on. And I think the legacy that I hope to leave is not something tangible, rather it would be the network of interactions and just small things that you've had between people or things that you've sparked. I think when I say network, I'm imagining a spider web, but not something scary, something beautiful. And like the word gossamer comes to my mind, a gossamer web. Um, or yeah, just something silky, something delicate and something strong at the same time. That's what spiderweb thread to me represents. It's strong, it's delicate, it's hidden, it's invisible, it's um, elusive and it's strong. So I think that's a pretty good metaphor. So yeah, that's how I plan to make the world a better place. And I'm still, you know, doing things, uh, hoping for the best. So thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, a question a day keeps the learning underway. Today, I learned that I am, you know, slowly and surely becoming into the person that I wish to be. If I'm totally honest, today, there's a few things that I just didn't feel like doing or I've been procrastinating or it hasn't been as efficient as I'd like it to be. But that's for the daily, daily recording the Remarkable episode. So we'll leave it at that for now. And I'm going to go and film that right now. So thank you so much for tuning in and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.